So it's finally the time for me to start hatching some goslings. Here on our farm, I have some ambitious plans to hatch maybe about 150 birds over the course of this spring. And so to do that, I'm gonna need to get my butt in gear. I've waited a rather long time to start the hatching process. The reason for that is I didn't wanna end up with goslings too early in the season that I'd have to put outside and have them struggle during our cold Vermont winters. But in today's video, I've got a whole bunch of goose eggs I've got a brand new gigantic incubator and I'm about to set them in there, get them all ready to go and start the hatching process. And you guys are gonna get to ride along throughout the whole experience. I'll show you every step of the way what happens. I'll show you how the eggs develop. You will ultimately see how many eggs I'm able to hatch. Hopefully you'll learn some things and we should have a pretty good time. So let's start packing the incubator. So speaking of the incubator, I just used some of my YouTube dollars and I splurged and got a really nice one. It's the Brinzy Ova Easy 380 incubator. It has capacity for I think up to 380 chicken eggs. I'm not exactly sure how many goose eggs it'll fit. For this first batch, I think I'm gonna actually end up doing two shelves worth of eggs. I put this little heater up in here because I know I need to keep my temperature control like at a very steady rate so that the incubator can work properly. But whew, it's gotten actually pretty hot in here. I also got a little barn cat hanging out up here. She really likes watching me do my work up here. So I've got a whole bunch of goose eggs. I've even got some extra duck eggs that I might throw into the mix if I have extra space on the trays. I think I have about 48 eggs that I put in there. The downside was I was planning on being able to get about 48 eggs per level. And I have the eggs now on two different levels. I'm gonna turn it so it starts to do its rotating thing. You can hear it beeping. That just says that it's gonna start doing the thing where it's, yep, see it's rotating. I wanna make sure it just rotates and doesn't tip over with the weight of the goose eggs. Now there is one downside to all of this, right? And that's, I have my eggs on two different levels. I was hoping to get 48 eggs on one level and then I'd do another 48 eggs next week and then another 48 eggs and then another 48 eggs and do that for five weeks. But at this point, right, it's rotating and it looks like it's doing its turning thing pretty well for the birds. Uh, my temperature is crawling back up. My humidity is crawling back up. Again, I'll check back in about a half an hour to make sure that this got up to 99.5 that the humidity is somewhere between 50 and 60%. At this stage of the game, there's not much else I should be doing or could be doing. So I will check back with you guys in a couple of days. All right, and it's now officially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days later. The goose eggs have been sitting in the incubator for the past nine days. They have been kept perfectly at the right temperature. They've been kept perfectly at the right humidity. They've been getting rotated multiple times a day. I've been checking on them multiple times a day. Everything is looking pretty darn great. But now comes the moment of truth. I'm going to pull the eggs out of the incubator and I'm gonna very carefully candle them and check and see each egg to see if there's life growing inside of it. I find that it's best and most efficient to do this really only once or twice through the entire incubation process. Some people get so into the incubation and watching it closely that they will check those eggs constantly. Generally speaking, I will only check them about one third of the way through, which is, you know, right around the nine or 10 day mark. And then maybe once more around the 15 to 17 day mark. Now, as you remember, we put in 48 eggs the other day Let's see how many of those 48 are seeming viable and ready to go. I should also note I have a couple trays of fresh eggs too. So these are gonna go into the incubator as well. If I'm gonna get to my goal number of 150 geese that I'm raising this year, I'm gonna have to do a lot of this. And I'm gonna have to hope that a lot of these eggs hatch and that the geese hatching season goes on for a long time. You see, I probably was a little bit more aggressive with selling these eggs than I might have originally planned to have been. The challenge is selling goose eggs for hatching by mail is a pretty good business to be in and it's relatively low effort versus the time and energy that it takes to hatch a gosling, raise it up to adulthood, butcher it, and then have it ready for meat sale. So even if I do end up coming below my 150 bird goal, I'll be okay with that. Aw, would you guys look at these little baby birds? Now, in order to candle these eggs properly, I'm gonna have to turn off the lights and I'm only gonna be able to use my handy dandy flashlight here. You see what happens is when you flash the flashlight into the egg, and it's dark, you can actually see a lot of details of what's going on inside the egg. So let's do this. Lumos. 
I always love doing that when I turn on a flashlight. I'm gonna take one of these eggs. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like here. And can you guys see how there's that veining pattern inside the egg? That's a good sign that it's developing nicely. I can even see that there's a little baby bird inside here. That, my friends, is the miracle of life. Now, because I have about 50 eggs here, I'm just gonna go through very quickly and check them. Uh, this one looks like it might be a dud. Yeah, see, that's totally clear. You can see there's nothing in it. That's a dud. Just to give you the comparison so you can really understand what I'm talking about. So on this one, you can clearly see the veins. You can clearly see embryo development inside. You don't get any of that with this one. This is just a clear old blob. This is a dud. Yeah, that's another dud. See, that's a good one though, see? See, can you see the difference? That's clearly a good one. Dud. So as you guys can see here, out of the 48 eggs I had in the incubator, six of them were duds. That's a pretty good ratio. Doesn't mean all of the remaining 42 are gonna develop, but it's a good sign that I'm making a lot of progress with my eggs. All right, I'm gonna take these eggs and put them back in the incubator. Back in the oven you go, little fellas. Now what I'm gonna do is fill up a couple more trays of eggs and put them in the incubator as well. These are all of our duds. I'm gonna throw them in the compost tomorrow morning. Here's our fresh batches of eggs. Okay, so that's another 45 eggs in there. So if I include the other 42 that have been in there for nine days, it means I've got a total of 87 eggs ready to hatch, or I guess I should say in the process of hatching. I got to admit, I got a little over ambitious with how much incubator space I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to wait a little while before I can do the next round of adding eggs because this thing is stuffed full with goose eggs. I'm gonna keep watch of these eggs over the next week or two, but I will check back in soon when I'm getting ready to go into lockdown. Well, it's the morning of day 30 here at Goldshaw Farm, and our eggs are definitely starting to hatch. Overnight, I could see a whole bunch of eggs pipping out, meaning that the little baby goslings are trying to break their way out of the tough, tough goose shell. As somebody who struggled to crack goose eggs myself, it's definitely not an easy task. And so I'm always very nervous at this part of the journey. In the past, we've actually had some goslings that have started to hatch, but then didn't end up hatching. I actually think that last year when that happened, some of that was my fault because I was too quick to open up the incubator and let them out. And so this year I am being super disciplined, especially because we have this great cabinet incubator that I can just leave closed and let them all hatch. I can just be patient for the next 24 to 48 hours. When you think about it, right? When a gosling hatches at a hatchery, 
it usually takes about 24 hours for the hatch to take place. It'll take them two or three days to actually go from the hatchery to your farm. That means I can go even longer than 48 hours without even having to open this incubator. And so that's gonna be my plan this year. That might mean that one or two of them might not make it because I'm not gonna assist their hatch but my hope is that, that it means that more of the overall goslings are gonna hatch and do well. I will admit I'm a little bit nervous about this hands-off approach, but I'm putting my faith in a lot of the good advice that I've received from many folks over the last year, and we're gonna see how this works out. But yeah, as you look back here, you can see some of them are starting to come out. Like you see that one in the back, probably the most hatched. There are several little babies coming as we speak. I see by my count on the bottom layer about eight that have started to pip and hopefully a lot more will pip soon. On the second layer I can see about three that have also pipped and they're doing good. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it in the video but there's definitely some squeaking and noise happening which is also very very exciting. Come on guy you can get your little beak out of there. I know you can do it. Okay, so it's now the end of the day. I'm about ready to shower and get ready for bed. But I figured I'd come in and check on the goslings. And so far, it looks like they're doing pretty good. It looks like I got about a half dozen that are fully hatched. I got a, probably about another five or six that are starting to pip or have significantly pipped. And so I'm excited to see what comes of this. The ones that have hatched, some of them have been out for about six or seven hours now. Um, and they look pretty happy and healthy. They're moving around. You know, if you think like of when a gosling perch hatches, they usually spend that first day or two just underneath their mom, staying warm, drying off, waiting for their brothers and sisters to hatch. And so what I've got going on right now is something somewhat similar to that. Really, I'm gonna probably give this a full 48 hour time period before I call it an end and give up on some of the birds that are in there, or at least pull the ones that have hatched out and have them in the brooder. But I gotta say, just looking at them right now, they are super adorable. I really can't wait to see how many I've got tomorrow morning.
So I think we have seen most of the hatching that we're going to see. And so now it's time to take these little guys out of the incubator and bring them out to the brooder. This is gonna be my temporary holding tank for them. Hello, little ones. Hi there. Greet the world. In you go. You too. Aw, you three. You seven. Um, so I think you're gonna stay back in there. You. Number eight. Yeah, you look ready to go. Oh, look at that little darling. I don't see any other eggs that are hatching in there, but there are still four of them that need more time in the brooder, so I'm gonna leave them in there. First, I'm gonna to top this off with some water. There is a couple more eggs in there. None of them, I think I saw one that looks like it pipped, but I'm not sure about it. I'm gonna give them another 24 hours before I try to bring them outside. By the way, it's really hot in this room. I've got that heater going. So these guys are actually pretty content happy. Don't worry, this is just a holding tank. I'm gonna bring you to your home in a moment. Let's go, my little ones. Little barn cat is absolutely fascinated with what's going on here. Come on, out we go. I know, we're gonna go out into the cold for a moment. It's still only 36 degrees this morning. So this is gonna be a little bit of a shock for you guys, but don't worry, it'll get warmed back up real quick. Hey Pablo, stay clear of these guys, huh? Taking you into the barn. I got this nice little protected room. This room will keep you guys safe. In you go. I'm gonna get you guys a little drink of water. Try out the water. Over there is some food. And you have all this space to run. Here you go, get a drink of water. You, get a drink of water. There we go. There you go. A little water for you. A little water for you. Yeah, there we go. Here you guys, just so everybody knows where the warm spot is. Oh, little girl, don't worry, you're the last one in. Get you a drink of water. There. What you guys find this part of the house? I am worried that they're a little cold. Make sure they know about this. We got the brooder plate. This is a radiant heat light bulb, so there's no light coming off of it, but it does have radiant heat. They use it usually for like reptiles. It's always so incredible to me to watch them experience the world for the first time. You got so much energy. You know, I know I'm gonna get some questions from folks about those plates. Like, weren't, wasn't I criticizing Tractor Supply because they were using these brooder plates? And the answer to that is, I'm not against using radiant heat to brood your birds. I actually think the radiant heat's a good thing. My problem was with how Tractor Supply was applying that process across all of their stores. And the contraption they were using didn't seem to be working properly. But no, in this setting, I'm very happy with it. I'll probably do away with this thing in a couple of days when they get a little bit older. It's just, it's so cold right now. I mean, the air temperature, like I said, is, looking at my watch here, 39 degrees right now. I'm just gonna let them hang out in here for a little while and get used to their surroundings, explore things. You can see they've got a water set up here. I like to use in the early days, just like these feeders for water because it keeps them from making a splashy mess. And then I also use a feeder that's usually a different color for the food. The food is, um, chick starter that's unmedicated, and then I treat it with uh, some brewer's yeast so it has the niacin that they need. When they get to be about three or four weeks old, I'll switch them over to waterfowl food, and I will um, not have to treat that with niacin, which is nice. And then really by week six, seven, eight, I really try to taper off how much food they get and let them do their on their own. Admittedly though, I'm gonna be selling a bunch of these guys, and so, it might not be around the farm for too long. In terms of coloring, it looks like we've got definitely a couple of Toulouse geese, I think. So that one, that one, that one definitely look like Toulouse. She looks like a Toulouse Emden Cross or Pilgrim Cross. Uh, same with these two. I don't know. They definitely look like they're half breeds. They're going to have some interesting coloring, I think. It'll be very exciting. They definitely don't seem too cold, which is one of the biggest things I was worried about. 
just because it is so cold here today. I'm gonna keep watching them closely, checking back in every so often. Welcome to the world, little guys.